Japan's transportation technology is considered one of the best in the world. Yokohama, a city that symbolizes Japanese civilization, served as the pioneer in the development of transportation technology. Today, Yokohama is one of the world's leading international cities. But until the opening of the Yokohama port, this area was only a small village of about 100 houses of farmers and fishermen. To prevent Japanese from coming into contact with foreigners in order to avoid conflicts, Yokohama was chosen as the ideal site to establish a port. The city's development began with the construction of various types of roads. To establish the Yokohama port, the first thing the Tokugawa shogunate did was to build port facilities such as wharves and custom houses. Once the port was opened, it connected Yokohama with countries around the world by sea, as if it created roads across the sea. Roads across land were also built to connect Yokohama with all parts of Japan, and later in the Meiji era, railroads appeared. Given how crucial these roads across the sea and land were to the development of Yokohama as an international city, their creation was prioritized above all else. Let's take a look at the journey of modern transportation in Yokohama as it connected city to city and people to people. In 1853, Japan was actively restricting foreign trade. The sudden arrival of four black western ships stunned the Japanese. On board was Commodore Perry of the US Navy. He came to demand that Japan open its doors to the world. At the sight of the smoke billowing warships, the Japanese were terrified. The shogunate even constructed a so-called daiba as a fort for maritime defense. In 1858, the signing of the Treaty of Amity and Commerce between the US and Japan opened three ports of foreign trade in Japan. One of them, Yokohama, was chosen as the closest port to Edo, what is now modern-day Tokyo. At that time, Yokohama was a day's walk from Edo and located at a distance from Kanagawa Minato, a domestic port with a market frequented by many Japanese. Thus, Yokohama was selected as a site for a foreign settlement. In order to promote modernization, the Japanese government made approaches to Western countries and invited experts in various fields. They included specialists in infrastructure, civil engineering, architecture, and naval systems from the United Kingdom, experts in diplomacy, education, agriculture, and pioneering technology from the United States, from Germany, authorities in medical science and law, and from France, leaders in army systems. They introduced Western culture to Japan, and at the same time, opened the culture and people of Japan to the West. Among them, a British engineer who visited Japan at the beginning of this period is still revered as the father of Yokohama's urban development. Richard Henry Brunton, also known as the father of Japanese lighthouses. Japan had no modern lighthouses up to that point. The sea at night in Japan, called the Dark Sea, frightened sailors. 
Brunton designed and supervised the building of lighthouses to serve as beacons for foreigners following the so-called roads across the sea to Japan. He came to Japan in 1868 when he was 26 years old. He described his impression of the Japanese people at that time. During the inspection of the lighthouse installation, the Japanese gentlemen were puzzled when seeing a European-style dining table for the first time. They did such things like frown after licking the ketchup and vinegar, or they sniffed the pepper shaker and seemed completely alarmed. But after a couple of days, they got used to it, and they started tasting the food the same way we did. I am impressed with the Japanese ability to adapt to change. That's what happened when we built the Yoshida Bridge. I was asked by the governor of Kanagawa Prefecture to show the Japanese how to build European-style bridges. Everyone from samurai to merchants came to watch and talk about it. As they assembled the girders, the Japanese mastered using rivets for the first time. The bridge never collapsed. It became a famous place that everyone called the Iron Bridge. Brunton became actively involved in Yokohama's urban development. In addition to surveying foreign settlements, he helped lay Japan's first telegraph line between Tokyo and Yokohama. He designed Yokohama Park, a modern park to improve the living environment for foreigners. He also paved and maintained the roads so that they were sanitary and could withstand the use of horse-drawn carriages, which were the legs of the foreigners. In Yokohama, Brunton created the guiding principles for modernization. One more important figure involved in the city's development was also known as the Father of Yokohama. It was Takashima Kaemon, one of Yokohama's foremost lumber dealers and building contractors. To pay off his father's debts, Kaemon assumed responsibility under the family name. まさに重い in 1865, just after the opening of the port, a huge fire destroyed one-third of the Japanese settlement and one-fourth of the foreign settlement. Kaimun set out to rebuild them. Lacking knowledge of Western architecture, Kaimun collaborated with Richard Perkins Bridgens, an American architect in Yokohama. Shimizu Kisuke II, a carpenter who had been performing construction work for the Tokugawa shogunate in the foreign settlement, was requested to do construction work. They teamed up to work on the new city center. At that time, timber-framed stone construction was the conventional method of fire protection. However, Kaemon proposed using a simple namako wall a Japanese type of fireproof wall, which made the construction more affordable. The first joint project for the three men was the Provisional British Legation. It became a hot topic at the time, and the British minister praised them by saying, the Takashima House is the best civil engineering contractor in Japan. In addition, Kaemun was subcontracted to work on lighthouses for Brunton, the father of Yokohama's urban development, as he had been involved in the construction of Brunton's official residence. When Brunton drew up plans for a water supply system, Kaemun, along with other Yokohama merchants, established a water supply company to finance it. Kaemon also installed the first gas lamps in Japan.
the Takashimaya Ryokan, a Japanese-styled hotel which Kaemon ran, became a salon where foreign ministers and VIP of the new Meiji government gathered. ま、私も上記船の早さにすっかり見られて、オランダ領事を通して船を買って定期便を開いてみたりもしましたしね。人形は一人ではできません。欧米各国の人々とも交際して、その長所を取り入れて、こちらの端所を補っていく。私どもの Foreigners had brought horse-drawn carriages to Japan. At this point, roads were being paved, and Japanese investors also contributed financially to the appearance of horse-drawn stagecoaches. It is said that Kaimon also bought a carriage and traveled back and forth between Tokyo and Yokohama. The journey to Edo, which used to take a full day, was reduced to half a day by carriages. When a city is built, there is a road for people to get there. If you build a new road, more people will come, and the city will grow even bigger. The two fathers of Yokohama could already foresee the new roads to come. modernization of Yokohama's transportation system. One of the best examples is the construction of railroads. The construction of the railroad had been under consideration since the Edo period, just after the opening of Yokohama port. The Tokugawa shogunate had licensed the construction of the railroad to the United States. However, the license also gave railroad management rights to the U.S. as well. Because the new Meiji government was pushing for Japan to take the lead in building the railroads, it disapproved of this license. In response, Brunton, being a British railroad engineer himself, appealed to the government. In the UK, the railroads are privatized. But a variety of speculative companies entered the market to acquire rights causing harm to the market. In Japan, the railway business should be run by the government itself. Takashima Kaemon is said to have spoken with Okuma Shigenobu and Ito Hirobumi, prominent government officials who would one day become prime ministers when they visited his hotel. In the early Meiji era, Japan suffered a bad harvest and famine in the Tohoku and Kyushu regions. Many died of starvation, leaving the people filled with worry. If only there was a transportation system capable of delivering a good harvest of rice from the Hokuriku region. This was the justification for railroads. Promoting the railroad project, Okuma and Ito proceeded to negotiate with the UK. In addition, Harry Parks, the British minister, convinced Iwakura Tomomi a leading figure in the Meiji Restoration to connect Tokyo and Kyoto by railroad so that the emperor could travel between the new capital and old capital of the Edo period. For financing, the Oriental Bank of England was delegated with issuing public bonds. The one million pounds issued at this time, 8.56 million US dollars in today's currency, was Japan's first foreign bond. Of this amount, 300,000 pounds was to be used for railroad construction. On December 12th, 1869, the government decided to build a railroad between Tokyo, Kyoto, and Kobe to connect the major ports and the two capitals. 
The initial project began with the Tokyo-Yokohama line. arrived in Yokohama one after another to build the Far East's first railroad. They were led by a man who was later called the benefactor of Japanese railroads. It was Edmund Morell. He was only 29 years old, but he became the chief railroad engineer because he had a vision to build a railroad that would fit the realities of Japan. I heard that the Japanese government was planning to import railroad ties and other materials for the tracks from the UK, but I said, no way. Japan has an abundance of wood, so why not use it? If we use it, we can save on costs and shorten the construction period. It will even promote the development of the domestic industry. His vision was to build a railroad that met the needs of Japan. With this in mind, Morel suggested that Japanese accompany him on his surveys foreigners and Japanese began to work together on the railroad project. One of the Japanese men who joined the team was Inoue Masaru, who later became known as the father of Japan's railroads. He was born in the Choshu Domain, which is now Yamaguchi Prefecture in Western Japan. From early on, he became familiar with Western studies and made it a rule to explore the advantages of the West to compensate for our own weaknesses. In the late Edo period, while in England, his field of study was railroads. この波は必ず来ると確信しました。私たちがイギリスへ立ったのはちょうど長州で上位が始まった頃でした。私をイギリスに送り出してくれた長州の実力者は、長州が上位だと日本の武力を見せつけたって、その後には必ず各国が交通
Morel was of the same opinion. In the United Kingdom, there was no governmental involvement in railroad industry due to its privatization. Not only that, engineer training standards were not adequately implemented and the level of the engineers was falling rather than improving. Education of engineers is a must. In order for Japanese to build their own railroads, an engineering school and a bureau to oversee the industry are necessary. In response to Morel's suggestion, the Ministry of Engineering was formed to oversee not only railroads, but shipbuilding, mining, and the telegraph industry as well. A training institute for engineers called Kogakuryo, the engineering dormitory, was also created within the Ministry of Engineering. This school, which later became the Imperial College of Engineering, is said to be the predecessor of today's Faculty of Engineering at the University of Tokyo. Later, Inoue would also put in place a training institute for engineering technicians in Osaka for the development of Japanese engineers. By building railroads, Japan built its people and its country. This is the reason why Inoue said his life began with the Iron Road and will end with the Iron Road. However, a major obstacle stood in the way. Originally, they had planned to start the line from Shinbashi Station and have it pass through the urban area along the Tokaido Road, the highway connecting Tokyo to Kyoto. However, the Ministry of War objected to this plan. They said, it is not desirable for the country to have a station near Tsukiji. We request that you immediately contact the Ministry of Popular Affairs to suspend the railroad construction inside the Takanawa area. In addition, there was opposition from local residents and the Satsuma clan, which had a residence in Takanawa, resulting in the cancellation of the survey. Was this the end to all their dreams for the Iron Road? Okuma Shigenobu, the Director General of the Ministry of Popular Affairs and the Head of Railroad Construction, made a decision. Surprisingly, he said he was going to build a railroad track within the sea. For the first time in my life, I was told to build a railroad in the ocean. I've never heard of such a thing, even in England. But because this kind of railroad was needed in Japan, we had no choice but to do it. It required laying down railroad tracks on man-made landfill embankments within the sea. They reclaimed about 2.7 kilometers from the current JR Tamachi Station to an area nearby Shinagawa Station. はい、ご覧になっていただいているのは高輪の地区定と言いまして、海の中をですね、鉄道を走らせるための筒みを作りまして、ま、この上をちょうと蒸気艦車がま、走った。で、表面はですね、波の衝撃を受けますので。It is said that many of the people once involved in the construction of the Daiba also performed work on the embankment. The Japanese technology used in the creation of the Daiba was also utilized in the manner in which the stone walls were stacked in the way they were reinforced with several piles to prevent them from collapsing, and in the stone materials themselves.
At the same time, Inoue Masaru negotiated with the residents who were opposed to the embankment and who argued, if they build the embankment in the sea, we won't be able to fish. In the end, Inoue reached an agreement with the residents by adding an entryway for ships in the embankment. It led him to create a railroad crossing over the shipping lane, which was a remarkable achievement. And also... で、当時あの、この金具は、えっと、日本にないので、おそらく外国から輸入品を使って、つい先ほどまであの真上に京浜東北線が走っていた。最近まだ走ってた京浜東北の基礎としても意味をなしている。現代までですね、え、繋がっていこうというふうに捉えていいかというふうに思います。Steadily, the iron road continued to grow. Meanwhile, in Yokohama, the coastline near Yokohama was a steep cliff that was known as a scenic place of beauty. Building a railroad to Yokohama was an extremely difficult task. So they decided to build a landfill in the sea near Yokohama as well and lay a shortcut line. It was Takashima Kaemon who came forward with this project. あの頃私は大津の山に登って工事を指揮していたんですが、いろいろと停滞し打ち向けましたよ。海を私物化するなと住民から石を投げられたり。私は見ての通り図体が大きいので格好の的でしたよ。新しいことは最初は怖いものです
私も早速鉄道に乗りましたよ最高でしたね<笑>何より横浜から東京までたった53分ですよ馬車で半日だったのがたったの53分馬車で片道行く間に2往復できてしまうんですよもう年がいもなくはしゃいでしまいましてね私も1日2往復分乗ってしまいましたよ<笑>高島嘉右衛門 was completely fascinated by railroads He continued to work tirelessly, attempting to build Japan's first private railroad between Tokyo and Aomori. And Inoue Masaru, who took the helm as the head of the railroad. の走る姿モレルさんにも<笑>見てもらいたかったな On September 23rd, just before the opening of the railroad, Morel, who suffered from tuberculosis, Died of the disease at the young age of 31. Yokohama was his final resting place. One day, the Japanese will build a railroad with their own hands. As if to carry out Morel's will, Inoue set up a training institute for engineering technicians in Osaka. After receiving sufficient training, The Mount Osakayama Tunnel between Kyoto and Osaka was completed solely by Japanese engineers. After retiring, Inoue established the first private locomotive manufacturer in Japan. He continued to be involved with railroads throughout his life. Seventeen years after the opening of the Shinbashi Yokohama Line, the 600 kilometer railroad line connecting Tokyo and Kobe was completed. This new line, named the Tokaido Line, became the foundation for Japan's railways, attracting many people to Yokohama and developing it into a major terminal city. The demand for transportation between Tokyo and Yokohama increased, leading to the construction of the Keihin Electric Railroad, Japan's oldest intercity railroad, as well as to the creation of streetcars connecting the city to the suburbs, and to the development of regional railroads that linked Yokohama to regional cities, such as the Yokohama Railroad. Cities also began to spring up along the various lines. One hundred and fifty years have passed since the inauguration of Japan's first railroad. Yokohama's transportation network has expanded. More and more people are visiting Yokohama, and new towns are being built beyond the railroads. The landfill upon which Takashima Kaemon built a railroad later became Takashima Cho, the foundation of today's Minato Mirai district. Once a small village of fewer than 100 houses, Yokohama is now an international city of 3.7 million people. The foundation for this development was the roads created by our forefathers. あの、新しいですね、拡大していくんですけども、これはその鉄道を中心とした交通網の拡張とここから関わって、まず交通網ができて、市街地ができて、あの、新居拡張するっていう場合もあります。
あるいは逆に市街地が先に大きくなってそれに合わせて交通も整備していくという場合もあるその都市の市行政区域を超えて市街地に大きくなってますし横浜ですと東京ともくっつき市街地は完全に連続してしまってますし交通網も一体化してしまっていますで行政区域だけは、まあ、横浜市あるいは東京というに分かれてるんですけどもそれはもう一つの都市になってしまっていますね交通網と実際の市街地と都市圏そのこの3つが必ず関わっている Roads create cities and cities create new roads To this day The limits of the roads paved by our forefathers are continuously pushed forward. <laughs> <laughs>